So, here's uh, some rather disappointing news regarding Titanfall. It turns out um, we've got another Resolution Gate fiasco going on. Um, only this one is with an exclusive title on the Xbox One. So, you might know that Microsoft has been having a bit of a problem getting developers to really crank the Xbox One up to those higher resolutions at high frame rates. And it was always expected that first party titles, or should I say exclusive titles, should get a little bit more love from Microsoft to be able to optimise and really push their game up to those 1080p resolutions. Now, here's where things get a little bit messy for Microsoft. Titanfall, which is um, obviously a game produced by Electronic Arts, released by Electronic Arts, but exclusive to Xbox One, is only running at 1408 by 792 for the resolution. So 792p, if you want to uh, be exact about this. Um, it's certainly higher than 720p, which a lot of Xbox 360 games would run at, but it is a long way short, uh, frankly, of what I would expect from, you know, the Xbox One um, for a title that should have been given a massive amount of love by Microsoft and really, you know, pushed to get this up to a 1080p resolution or at very least 900p. Um, now, the guys at uh, Respawn who are producing the game, the developers, have said that they are working at the moment to patch Titanfall to hopefully bring it up to around 900p. Um, but there's going to be some compromises if they're going to achieve that. So effectively, they could do 1080p without any anti-aliasing. So that means you can have jaggy lines around things. Now, there's a slight offset there because the higher the resolution, the less anti-aliasing is kind of necessary to kind of smooth things out on bigger screens. So not necessarily a massive problem if they did decide to drop the anti-aliasing altogether. However, the other option they're working on is to go to 900p and use FXAA, Fast Approximate Anti-Aliasing. This is a technique that we've been using in the PC industry and probably in games consoles as well for a heck of a long time, probably certainly three or four years, and technology-wise, it's a really good approach to at least getting some anti-aliasing in there. It's fast, it's approximate, it's not perfect, but it does the job. Obviously, whenever you have anti-aliasing, that is where you start taking a resolution hit because every frame has to have all the lines and edges smoothed out around the textures and the models and everything like that to really give it that kind of sharp pop. Otherwise, what we get is a game that might look graphically great, but you kind of have this ugly, shimmery, speckliness really round uh, artifacts. And what that really leads to is just a, a slightly more mucky looking picture. It lacks that clarity, that kind of pop that, you know, we really like. What we want from our games is something that comes close to what, you know, Pixar put out in their uh, movies. Beautiful, clean lines with, you know, great colour. And a lot of that really comes from having great anti-aliasing working well. But you pay a big performance hit for it. And that seems to be where um, the guys at Respawn are kind of coming unstuck a little bit. In order to actually do um, anti-aliasing, you're having to use the ESRAM in quite particular ways and they're struggling to balance up resolution, anti-aliasing and doing that within the ESRAM all in one go. And so there are some compromises. Like I say, they've essentially released this game um, at the same resolution as the beta. So if you weren't overly happy with the uh, resolution on the beta, if you thought the image particularly wasn't great, then it's not improved at launch, put it that way. But there is potentially a patch incoming that should make things a little bit better. Now, really, the, the question here is, how did Microsoft allow this to kind of happen? And why are they happy to allow this to happen on their biggest launch game? You know, this is the one they want to ship consoles, you know? Um, so far, there hasn't really been a game that was a must-buy and I must get the Xbox One. So far, there hasn't really been, you know, a killer title for the Xbox One where you kind of had to rush out and you must buy it. Titanfall's the first one. And unfortunately, to find the game that it's just not hitting even what I would call close to uh, a suitable resolution. 792p? Sorry, well short. 900p needs to be the bare minimum for a next-gen console to be hitting resolution-wise. Otherwise, frankly, it's not really a next-gen console, is it? It's just a console with a slightly faster chip, slightly faster to APUs in there, but ultimately it's not really offering next gen. Plain and simple, it's not offering next gen. It might have next gen graphics, it might have next gen gameplay, but it's not hitting that resolution, that sweet spot that honestly I as a gamer actually expect from Microsoft and their partners. Um, 
really, if this game needed longer in the oven to get those resolutions right, to then get the um, anti-aliasing working exactly perfectly combined with the resolution, they should have given it more time. They shouldn't have rushed this one out just to ship units. Um, Unfortunately, we will see, um, because the early reviews that I'm seeing coming out from the States show that this game is not the AAA title that everyone was expecting. Um, average scores at the moment are around 85 on Metacritic. That's not a big AAA title. That's kind of AA kind of uh, levels. Um, a AAA title will really clock in over 85 and into the 90s. Um, what we're really getting here is a game that, well, there seems to be quite a bit missing. I think that the way the single player seems to have been hung into this game isn't really working, and that's where we're getting some lower scores. But ultimately, from a technical standpoint, Titanfall running at 792p, that doesn't impress me much.